The movie unfolds as Jackson Briggs, an army ranger, awakens to a clamor resonating through his bedroom, struggling against the persistent ringing in his ears. Amidst this disquiet, he navigates to his desk, seeking solace in a regimen of pills mean tea to alleviate his condition. Transitioning to another scene, Jackson is shown diligently working at a bustling fast food establishment, efficiently catering to customers. During a break from his duties, while disposing of trash, he engages in a phone conversation with Dorothy, a receptionist at Black Canopy Global Security. This call centers on verifying his status for a prospective assignment in Pakistan. Despite Dorothy's reminder of his prior brain injury, history deeming him unsuitable for deployment in a war zone. Undeterred, Jackson persists, citing his submission of a medically clean report. However, Dorothy reiterates the necessity for validation by his commanding officer, stressing the looming deadline for the rotation. Subsequently, Jackson finds himself at a secluded cabin, engaging in the therapeutic act of chopping wood when he receives an impactful call from Captain Jones. Jones delivers the distressing news of the passing of a dear comrade, Riley Rodriguez, prompting Jackson's agreement to pay his respects at the barracks the following day, driven by deep sorrow for the loss of his close friend. Jackson makes his way to Peyton Barracks the next day. Among fellow soldiers, he partakes in a gathering to honor Rodriguez's memory, participating in toasts and heartfelt conversations. During the camaraderie, he assists Captain Jones in managing a fellow soldier in an inebriated state, utilizing the moment to broach the topic of his pending rotation to Pakistan and the necessity of validating his medical clearance. Despite Jackson's hopes, Jones dismisses his concerns and departs, leaving Jackson feeling disheartened. The subsequent morning finds Jackson catching some sleep in his car when Captain Jones discovers him. Jones rouses Jackson, directing him to convene at the battalion within a half-hour window expecting an opportunity for Jones to review and potentially endorse his medical report. Jackson arrives at the division, hopeful for a positive turn of events. As Jackson proceeds towards the entrance gate, a snag halts his progress when the station soldier identifies an expiration on Jackson's ID. A dispute ensues swiftly resolved by the timely arrival of Captain Jones, who intervenes and corroborates Jackson's identity, paving the way for his entry into the battalion premises. Inside, Jackson expresses his appreciation to Captain Jones for reconsidering his predicament, seeking an opportunity for an interview. However, Jones remains primarily focused on their impending assignment guiding Jackson through the corridors of the military facility. In a subsequent scene, the duo enters a room brimming with lockers, where Jones retrieves belongings belonging to Riley from another soldier. Amidst this solemn task, Jackson's attention gravitates towards an album featuring a poignant photo of Riley's dog, inquiring about the fate of the canine. Jackson learns that the dog, named Lulu, is expected to be a special guest at the family's funeral in Nog Gallus on Sunday. Jones elucidates that it is now Jackson's responsibility to ensure the dog's presence at the event. Despite the potential unpredictability and hazards the dog might pose, amid a conversation laden with skepticism, it is decided that if Jackson can safely transport Lulu to Arizona, Jones will facilitate his inclusion in the rotation. Left with no alternative, albeit reluctantly, 
Jackson acquiesces to the stipulation. The subsequent scene sees Jones and Jackson heading towards Lulu's location. Jones cautions Jackson that Lulu is not the affable dog. He's accustomed to and urges vigilance. Approaching cautiously, Jackson attempts to leash Lulu. But an unexpected turn occurs when his contact with her ears triggers an aggressive response, prompting Lulu to attack Jackson. Somehow managing to contain Lulu within a cage, Jackson secures her in the trunk of his car before embarking on the journey with the challenging dog. Jones offers detailed guidance to Jackson on how to manage Lulu, recommending the book provided as a crucial reference for handling the dog during their journey. Taking the initiative, Jackson reaches out to Dorothy once more, stressing the urgency of the rotation. However, Dorothy outlines the need for recommendations from higher-ranking officials prompting Jackson to inform her about an impending call from his captain on Monday, prompting Dorothy to agree to expedite proceedings. Upon receiving communication from Jones before Wednesday, amidst the drive, Lulu's incessant barking becomes a significant disturbance, compelling Jackson to halt and remove her muzzle, assuming it causes discomfort. However, the moment the muzzle comes off, Lulu aggressively lunges at him, prompting Jackson to swiftly reapply it. Later, seeking respite, Jackson makes a stop at a gun club to practice, shooting unfortunately. The loud gunfire exacerbates the ringing in his ears, adding to his frustration. During this time, Lulu manages to break free from her cage wreaking havoc by damaging the car seat. An irked Jackson returns, administering drugged food to Lulu, leading to her tranquil and sleepy demeanor for the remainder of the journey. As night falls, Jackson makes a stop at the Portlandia Club but finds no success in connecting with the women there. Feeling disheartened, reflecting on his solitude, he acknowledges Lulu as his only companion. Attempts to hand-feed Lulu prove futile, as she only eats when food is tossed to her. Just before departure, two girls accompanied by their dogs express an interest in meeting Lulu. But Jackson remains cautious, wary of Lulu's unpredictable behavior. Engaging in conversation, Jackson learns about the girl's practice of tantric yoga. Subsequently, as Jackson enjoys a drink with the girls, he senses a romantic opportunity and tries to seize the moment. Meanwhile, Lulu's persistent barking draws the attention of a passerby, prompting concern for her well-being. Jackson, despite his efforts to manage the situation, steps outside to attend to Lulu, balancing the unexpected interruption with his attempts at forging a connection with the girls. The man, in a fit of anger, hurls a stone that shatters a nearby window. In response, Lulu leaps out of the car and fiercely attacks the man, catching Jackson by surprise. He desperately tries to restrain Lulu, but her relentless aggression startles the girls, prompting them to hastily close their car door, leaving Jackson and Lulu isolated, spending an unexpected and uncomfortable night in the car. Resuming their journey the next day, Jackson reflects on Lulu's previous behavior, wary of any potential outbursts. However, midway through their trip, Lulu manages to break free from her leash. Leaping out of the moving car, Jackson abruptly halts and hastily gives chase, following blood trails on the ground, leading him to a greenhouse. While Jackson frantically searches for Lulu, he suddenly feels a sharp sting and is shot with a tranquilizer, 
causing him to lose consciousness. As he gradually regains awareness, he finds himself bound to a chair in an unfamiliar location. He's introduced to Gus, a man who accuses Jackson of espionage, attempting to clarify his intentions of leaving with Lulu. Gus flips the chair and departs, urging Jackson to free himself. Remarkably, Jackson manages to break free from his restraints, equips himself with an axe, and cautiously proceeds towards Gus's residence. Upon entering, Jackson finds Lulu, but she seems distant and unresponsive, making it challenging to capture her attention, just as he is about to lose hope. He overhears a couple arguing. To his surprise, he witnesses Lulu eating from Gus's wife's hand. Intrigued by this revelation, Jackson enters the room still grasping the axe. Gus's wife, perceiving Lulu's feelings, demands an apology from her husband, and she promptly tends to Lulu's injuries. After providing food for both Gus and Jackson, she encourages them to reconcile their differences. Outside, as they enjoy their meals, Jackson imparts his knowledge to Gus about freeing oneself from a zip tie, fostering a connection over their shared concern for Lulu. In the midst of their conversation, Lulu unexpectedly darts between the two men. Gus's wife intervenes, explaining that a small piece of barbed wire had been lodged in Lulu's paws, but she is now well. Additionally, she reveals her belief in psychic abilities asserting that she can hear Lulu's thoughts. Returning inside, Gus's wife attempts to read Lulu's thoughts, initiating an intriguing interaction among them all. As she converses with Jackson, she begins to sense something related to his daughter. A subtle insight that Jackson doesn't immediately grasp. Despite her intuition, Jackson remains preoccupied, Grateful for the couple's help, Jackson bids them farewell, expressing his appreciation for their assistance. With three days remaining on their journey, Jackson buys a toy unicorn, contemplating the idea of taking Lulu to a luxurious hotel for their next stop. Upon arriving at a hotel, Jackson assumes a disguise pretending to be a visually impaired man with Lulu as his guide animal. Their ruse allows them to secure a complimentary room. That evening, they relish the comforts of the hotel. Initially declining a walk with Lulu, Jackson eventually changes his mind, as he orchestrates a possible romantic encounter with the hotel receptionist. Lulu, noticing a Muslim man, impulsively chases after him, inadvertently exposing Jackson's deception. This disruption leads to his brief incarceration, endangering their mission. While in jail, Jackson explains his predicament to the Muslim man, who empathizes with his situation, choosing not to pursue charges. Upon release, Jackson and Lulu resume their journey spending more quality time together. During a visit to his wife's house, Jackson carries the toy unicorn intended for his daughter. Unfortunately, the visit doesn't unfold as planned, leaving Jackson to depart with the toy still in hand. Subsequently, Jackson visits Lulu's brother Noah, surprised when Lulu warmly embraces Noah's master, Louis showcasing unusual affection. Engaging in pleasant conversation, Jackson learns more about Lewis's life. As they prepare to depart, Jackson discovers their belongings, including his medication, have been stolen. Lewis helps by having Lulu track Jackson's scent, leading them to an underground shelter for homeless individuals. Fortunately, 
Lulu sniffs out their belongings in a tent. After bidding farewell to Louis and Noah, Jackson and Lulu resume their journey without delay. Later that night, amidst their travel, Jackson engages in conversation with Lulu, offering words of encouragement and advising her to remain calm during the anticipated gunshots. At the upcoming funeral ceremony, as the rain pours down relentlessly, their car breaks down, leaving them stranded without shelter. Seeking refuge, they find solace at a nearby mechanic shop. However, when they attempt to leave, the rain intensifies, and Lulu stubbornly refuses to budge. Much to Jackson's frustration, Despite waiting in the rain and returning to console Lulu, she remains unresponsive. Jackson, determined to comfort her, resorts to showing her a movie called Grey's Anatomy from the dog book he found. Eventually, after persistent efforts, he succeeds in coaxing Lulu to eat from his hand and reads one of Riley's poignant poetry pieces to her. With the dawn of the next day, as the sun rises, Jackson takes Lulu, embarking on a journey while seeking assistance from passersby to reach their destination. After several attempts and a pickup truck, offering them a brief ride, they are compelled to continue on foot. Lulu's exhaustion becomes apparent, and Jackson, witnessing her discomfort, carries her on his shoulders. Determined to press forward, they trek until Lulu can no longer continue, prompting her to rest on the road. Witnessing her fatigue, Jackson, filled with empathy, carries her until they finally arrive at the funeral grounds. During the emotional and poignant funeral ceremony, Lulu becomes restless whining and barking until Jackson decides to release her from the leash. She gravitates toward Riley's boots, tenderly resting her head on them, touching the hearts of everyone present. As the soldiers fire their guns in honor of Riley, Jackson remains by Lulu's side, providing comfort and calming her during the solemn proceedings. Post-funeral, Jackson carrying the weight of Riley's belongings, respectfully hands them over to his grieving parents. He then attends to Lulu's needs, ensuring her well-being while taking the opportunity to repair his car. During the wait, Jackson contacts Captain Jones, providing a comprehensive report, and receives the heartening news that Jones has recommended him for the rotation. Jackson proposes the idea of finding a new home for Lulu to Captain Jones. But Jones asserts that handling the situation is solely Jackson's responsibility. After the car is repaired, Jackson initially plans to leave Lulu behind and takes her to an empty field. However, Lulu adamantly refuses to separate from Jackson demonstrating an unwavering affection that deeply moves him. Touched by Lulu's display of love, Jackson decides to keep her with him, and they spend the night at a nearby motel. During the night, Jackson is suddenly awakened by a piercing, high-pitched ringing in his ears due to missing his medication, leading to a seizure. After regaining some composure, he gravitates toward Lulu, who appears to express concern for him. In contrast to previous instances, Lulu refrains from reacting aggressively fostering a poignant and comforting moment as they lie together on the floor. The following day, Jackson accompanies Lulu to a military base, intending to part ways with her. However, unable to endure the thought of Lulu being taken away, he abruptly returns, citing that Lulu behaves better when wearing her vest. Ultimately, 
he decides to keep her by his side. Realizing the depth of their bond. In the subsequent days, Jackson seeks guidance from Noah to train Lulu and makes the heartfelt decision to officially adopt her. He also takes the crucial step of reconnecting with his wife and daughter. Feeling a profound sense of gratitude towards Lulu for playing a pivotal role in his life-saving journey. The movie concludes with Jackson expressing his gratitude by adding a heartfelt thank you note to the dog book commemorating Lulu's impact on his life. In this forest, a dog can be seen every day. It always disappears without a trace during the day. But it can be seen returning to the forest at night. The dog's unusual behavior made people wonder. Where did it go after it disappeared from the forest? Does the dog encounter any difficulties that cannot be solved? We often hear stories about dogs in our lives. The loyal and lovely image of dogs is deeply rooted in the hearts of the people. People who own dogs often have more wonderful experiences. In fact, dogs are not only loyal to humans, but the friendship between dogs is also very strong. When one of them encounters difficulties, the other will never leave the companion alone. In the following short story, we will see the touching emotions of two dogs. It was a sunny afternoon. In a small town in Washington, a family was having a party. There was lively laughter one after another. The host took care of the guests who came and went. Everyone was immersed in this wonderful afternoon. However, some bad things happened quietly. Due to the negligence of the owner, the two dogs in the family got out through the small door in the backyard. Phoebe and Tilly are two adorable dogs who grew up together and are inseparable in everything they do. So on this afternoon, the two dogs were attracted by a small butterfly outside the yard. And the owner who was busy with the party forgot to lock the small garden gate. So Phoebe and Tilly sneaked out, thinking that they will come back after playing enough. But until the owner ends the party, there is no dog in the house. In fact, the two dogs often slip out to play. But every time they come home before dinner, they never worry the owner. But this time it seemed a little unusual. The owner who didn't wait until the dogs came home, had a bad premonition. He told the police about the disappearance of the dogs, and the police promised to help find the whereabouts of the two dogs. Where did the two dogs go, Phoebe and Tilly were chasing butterflies all the way. But they accidentally broke into the forest. Although the dogs can find their way home through the smell, this is a place they have never been before and they are quickly lost. Direction. To make matters worse, Phoebe accidentally fell into a cistern, which trapped Phoebe in a cistern as deep as a person. Tilly was also very anxious, and it was impossible to rescue her partner with its strength. Tilly looked at Phoebe trapped at the bottom of the cistern. She knew she couldn't sit still, and she wouldn't let her friend go. Tilly lay on the edge of the cistern all night, accompanying Phoebe who was in danger. The next morning, Tilly was nowhere to be seen in the forest. It turned out that it had started looking for a way out of the forest early in the morning, hoping to attract people who could help them. Tilly did manage to find a place where people lived through the forest. She eagerly came to the door of each house. But she could only call for help. But people couldn't understand what Tilly wanted to express. Some people took out something to eat and handed it to Tilly. While others chased it away impatiently. Tilly hadn't gained anything by day. But she'd be back with Phoebe at night. And she needed to reassure her friends. 
In this way, Tilly disappeared into the forest every morning and returned to the forest at night. After a few days, the two dogs who lacked food could hardly survive. Another morning, Tilly went out to ask for help as usual. And when it was driven away by residents again, it accidentally attracted someone's attention. Fortunately, the man was a volunteer at the animal rescue center. He noticed that Tilly was unusual. And Tilly screamed at the man as if grabbing a life-saving straw. The man knew that it must have encountered some difficulties. So he followed Tilly all the way to the depths of the forest. And found Phoebe who had been trapped in the cistern for several days. Thankfully. Someone finally found the two dogs. Finally. With the help of the police and the animal center. The two dogs and their owners were successfully reunited. The owner hugged the two dogs and wept with joy. Dogs are such loyal companions. They teach us what unconditional love is. And at the same time prove that dogs have the most. Selfless love in the world. Another story comes from California. Four-year-old John lives with his parents in a quiet town. John. S. Childhood life is very happy. He loves everything in nature. Especially likes to contact with small animals. Being away from the hustle and bustle of the city. Allowed John to appreciate the charm of nature better. John's parents often take their son to explore the forest. During the expedition. John made the best friend of his life. It was a stray dog who was starving before being discovered by John. And it was the four-year-old boy who gave it the food he had brought with him. The hearts of humans and animals are easy to get close. John and the dog quickly became good friends. Although John's parents did not have extra energy to feed a dog, this did not affect their closeness in the slightest. Every day, John brings food and goes to the place where the dog lives to find it. This has gradually become an agreement between the two friends. And it seems to have gradually become a habit. They chased and played in the woods. And basked in the sun together. The existence of dogs brought unparalleled happiness. And fulfillment to John's childhood. Not long after the peaceful life. The family encountered a serious crisis that is. John was lost. As usual, John always played at the time set by his parents. And he always came home for dinner on time. But this time it was late at night. And John hadn't come home yet. His parents went out anxiously to look for John. But they couldn't see him anywhere. In desperation. The parents called the police. And they spent the whole night calling and searching. John has been missing for three days. Not only the parents are desperate. But the dog is also extremely anxious. Because its friend has never missed an appointment. It has not waited for John for three consecutive days. So it knows that John must be in danger. It came to John's house and found that the police car was parked all day, coupled with the pained expressions of John's parents. The dog was more sure that something happened to John. So the dog started the journey of looking for John. From the day to the night. How it wished to smell a familiar smell. It turned around in the forest. Howling constantly. Hoping that John could listen to your own voice. Just when the dog was almost desperate, it finally felt the familiar smell. Which was John's smell. The dog put its nose to the ground and searched forward. Not daring to waste a second. Finally, the dog found the unconscious John on the edge of a bush. It eagerly licked John's cheek. Trying to wake him up. But John never woke up. The dog turned around and ran towards John's house. And stood in front of John's house with the fastest speed. 
John's parents recognized the dog as their son's best friend. Seeing it wagging its tail wildly and whimpering. The couple instantly understood and followed the dog to the forest. Fortunately. It was discovered in time. And John woke up soon after being sent to the hospital. The parents hugged John. And they never forgot what the dog did. And this time the dog rescued John. And the couple completely accepted it. And decided to feed this moving dog. There is no doubt that dogs are spirited creatures. Who bring surprises to us in times of crisis. In fact. The dog. S mind is very simple. Only persevering and pure love. When we encounter such a story. How can we not be touched by the dog? Well. This is the end of this video. If you like it. Please like and comment on our video. We will continue to bring you more. Touching stories about animals. So see you next time.